Hi, everybody. Welcome. Shabbat Shalom. Glad that you joined us again tonight here as we are circling the wagons to finish the first month of this new year. You've heard a lot from us this month of personal stuff in the Wilbur home, birthdays and all kinds of celebrations. And the word for this year, I believe, the word hope that was a couple weeks ago. My favorite four-letter word. Well, I don't know. Love is four letters too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, the Bible says the greatest of these is love. All right. So hope is my second favorite four-letter word. Tonight, I've got a, another song for you and a, and a thought um, that I want to share with you at our new table here for Shabbat in your home. Glad you could join us. So, dear, why don't you light the candles, and we will let the celebration begin. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitsharu, b'mitzvotav b'tzivanu, leheot or lagoim, v'natan lanu et Yeshua meshichenu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You've sanctified us with your word, and you've given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and you have called us to be a light unto the nations. Thank you for this Shabbat. We thank you that your love is shed abroad in our hearts. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you that you have given us everything that we need for life and godliness. We thank you that you are our great shepherd. And with you, you lead us, you guide us. And with you, we have no lack in any area of our lives. Thank you, Lord. No lack for healing, no lack of finances, no lack. We thank you in your mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I just have so many wonderful thoughts streaming through my mind, but we'll, hopefully I, I don't lose them. I, I love hearing you pray. Oh, thank you. I remember, I'm, I'm going to break from the traditional flow for just a second, but I remember the first date we had, we went to see Star Wars. The opening of Star Wars. I think we shared that earlier this month. And um, but I was a fairly new believer, mm -hmm. and I think you took a big chance going out with a guy that I, I had only at our first date. Um, I think I was only born again like three months, maybe. Yeah. You well, March, and our first date was in August. Yes, I remember it well. It was August the 10th. Um, the 10th, <laughs> yes, yes. I was waiting to see if yes. you remembered that. <clears throat> but uh, I was 27 years old, and uh, I didn't, I had no experience in dating as a believer. I, I remember it, it was quite a challenge for me, like, it wasn't that I was dealing with anything dark anymore. It was just, what do you do? Mm -hmm. How do you, uh, you like someone, you enjoyed the time. How do you finish your date? I got onto this because I heard you praying. And um, so I remember I walked you up to your door and uh, you had an apartment with a girlfriend at church. Yes, I invited you for coffee. You did? Because I was so excited, I had just gotten a new set of dishes. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to use them that day. <laughs> so I said, would you like to come in for coffee? <laughs> you were so excited because you got a new set of dishes. <laughs> I knew right at that point, this is an unusual girl, you know? And she had a brand new car. Her dad mm. had just bought you a new and bless me, yeah, Chevy Camaro. Ooh. Whoa, Firethorn red. Firethorn red. Ooh. 
Ooh. with the, the red vinyl top. Yeah, watch Very out. hot. Yes. But she was more excited about a new set of dishes. <laughs> you know that's the Marion type, right? <laughs> so I walked you up to the door, and I, I remember standing there, probably sweat beads forming on my forehead, like, what, what do we do now? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if I'd have known we were going to be married and we we're going to have a home and several children, I, I don't probably still wouldn't have known what to do. I was so new. When I got born again, I was so new. I remember looking into a mirror early on after I got saved and saying right out loud, who are you? I didn't, I wasn't used to responding this way. You're a new creature. I was, I was a new creature. Now I'm just a creature. But new back creation. then, new creation. I, I remember, I, how do you end a date? You know, God's watching. Uh, what are you supposed to do? Do you shake hands? Do you do, you do the, the Japanese thing? Do you just back away and say, hey, that was fun. Nice to see you. And you broke the ice and said, would you like to come in? I could tell you were very nervous. I was nervous. <laughs> unusually nervous. I, at 27, I shouldn't have been nervous, but it was like my first date. It was my it first was date yes. as, as a new believer. And oh, I was, that was your first date. Yes. You were my last date. I never went out with anybody but you. It was amazing. And I remember, I, we'll, get to, we'll get to the covenant stuff, but marriage is a covenant. So I guess this is where we're going tonight. So, you know, welcome, welcome to our home. So you said, would you like to come in for coffee? And, and I, I remember thinking, wow, <laughs> uh, she's inviting me to the apartment. But it was already like 9.30 or 10 o'clock, I think. Or was it earlier? I don't, I don't remember. Something like that. It was still pretty early. Yeah, well, yeah, but okay. So we went in. You made coffee. We're sitting on that sofa that sofa where we prayed, the sofa where we got engaged, the sofa where we hugged for the first time, and that was all just a hug. And then, then we knew, whoa. It was mm -hmm. like, you know, in the cartoons when the explosions happen over your head and, <laughs> and your mouth is dry and what in the world like, is it? Hello. It was, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, when we hugged, it was like, whoa. Yep. I felt like I was at home. I'm like, wow. This. Hmm. And I was like, okay, Lord, this, yeah. is, this is it. Amazing. So and we had our coffee, and we talked quite a while. And I remember I wanted to share with you my story. And, um, and you, I was going to... I was gonna, you know, dump all the beans of where I'd been and 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 you said, stop, I don't need to know. I don't need to know any of that stuff because you're a new creation. So as far as I'm concerned, you were born March 26th of this year. I can't tell you how that ministered to me. I, everything was so different for me. But then trying to figure out how do I get out of here? <laughs> how, do we, how do we end this? And, and you said, well, why don't we pray? And I thought, gee, what a novel idea. Why don't we pray? So I was sitting on the sofa with the coffee, and I, I bowed my head. And next thing I know, you got on your knees and turned around. Uh, you, were, you were praying on your knees. I thought, well... That's not something I'm used to doing. Uh, so I got up and I got on my knees and you started to pray like just a few minutes ago. And with God as my witness, I'm, I'm not trying to overblow this. You said, Father, and all of a sudden it's like everything stopped. I remember thinking, 
heaven just went quiet to hear what you had to say. I was, I was so blown away. <laughs> the first time I heard you pray, and I was reminded of it when you prayed right now. And finally, we said amen. And I get up off my knees, and you saw me to the door, didn't hug me, didn't shake hands. And, uh, and you said good night. I left. I walked outside that door, and I looked up at the sky that night in Bloomington, Indiana. I remember it well. It was August <laughs> the 10th. 10th. Yes, I remember it well. <laughs> August the 10th. I looked up at the sky, and I said, Lord, what are you doing to me? And April 29th, the next year, we were married. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it's been almost, well, this year it'll be 43 years. And look at you. <laughs> You're a vision. Amazing. Huh. All that just because you prayed. All right. But this table is about covenant. It's not about a religious exercise. It's not about something you have to do. It's an invitation into a covenanted relationship where we bear his name. We invite his presence. We release our autonomy over our own lives and schedules. Uh, that's probably one of the big resistors that I hear from people, but you know, that's our, that's our date night, or that's our football night, or that's our whatever night, and I, I can't give that up. I don't know, Jesus did. Um, so these are things that, you know, once you taste and see how good the Lord is, I, I remember when we first moved to Beth Messiah, Sid Roth, and remember, you know, Sid Roth, it's, it's miraculous. It's no, supernatural. It's supernatural. supernatural. Yes. I, I served his ministry for a couple of years, and um, he's, he's a dear friend. But um, back in those days, uh, when we moved to uh, Rockville, Maryland, to be a part of this congregation, mm -hmm. I had to work in order to provide for my family. And the only jobs I could find meant I had to work on Saturday. I didn't want to work on Saturday, but I had to. So the whole time I had that job, I would go to services on Saturday morning. I was the cantor and the worship leader, me and my guitar, and eventually a little band formed and we had a great time together, but I would run out of there at 11.30 in the morning, whether the service was finished or not, over to Sears, where I did my job. And provide, I had three jobs. Mm -hmm. You had one job. Yes. We had one car, that famous Camaro. Yep. Thank God for that Camaro. Nathan was six months old. Yeah. Yep. And you heard the story about Nathan when he was just a, a little guy and was sick and the Lord restored him through his presence, just supernaturally. But a whole time I'm working that job on Shabbat, I was praying. I said, Lord, you know I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Would you please find me something to do where I can feed my family and don't have to work on this day? Because I don't want to. I want to please mm -hmm. you. And bada bing, bada boom. He knew your heart. Yeah. So... He blessed us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which I just want to say, I, I grew up as a Presbyterian, so I didn't grow up um, doing Shabbat. Mm. And so when we went to Beth Messiah, we were learning about, you know, the feasts of the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, I just love love them ever since. Mm -hmm. I love Shabbat. I, love, I wasn't raised this way. But I just love Shabbat. I love all the feasts of the Lord because um, I love the Lord. Mm. And these are the, His feasts. Yeah. And we're celebrating Him. And mm -hmm. we're, it reminds us of all the wonderful things that He's done. 
so yep and his promises wanted... like he said the beginning of the year remember a couple of weeks ago the double portion mm -hmm. he's just he, he just wants us you know that's the the bottom line yes and that's... this is just spending time with him yeah yep. yeah it's fellowshipping good. with him mm -hmm. mm. having special time with daddy i don't know if i'm going <laughs> to get to that song mm -hmm. but we'll We'll celebrate the covenant. And so on that night, as Yeshua was celebrating the Passover, where a lot of these elements come from, huh? they're reflections of that uh, Passover when God broke the chains, he opened the gates, and, uh, and a one new man was born. What do I mean by that? You're gonna have to stay tuned. I'll share that when we get up to Passover in a couple of weeks. People say that Pentecost was the day the church was born. I say, nope, wrong. Passover was the day of the church, the ecclesia, the appearing of the one new man. And if you want to know why, you have to stay tuned for a couple more months. It's, it's coming. Yeah. And so Jesus sitting at the table with his friends... And it came time for the third cup, the cup of redemption. He picked up that cup and he said, this cup is my blood of the new covenant. And then he probably spoke these words. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Lord, we celebrate you tonight. You are the fruit of our salvation. As we receive this cup, we remember your sacrifice. We receive again the covenant that you've made with us and your very great and precious promises, which are yes and amen. And we give you thanks. And then the bread, and you've heard it many times, of course, at Passover. It's the unleavened bread, matzah, that's pierced and bruised and striped. But for Shabbat, we use these lovely loaves. They're made of three strands, and they're woven together and then baked so that the three become one. And if you can't figure that out, I, I'm not going to explain it. But there is uh, just such a special, our homes are filled every Friday afternoon with the smell of fresh bread coming out of the oven. It's pretty special. And that night, Yeshua took the bread, a special bread that had been separated from the other two loaves at the beginning and it was broken and wrapped in a white burial cloth. And then it comes back at the end of the meal. And that's the bread that Jesus took. And he said, this is my body. The one that was removed from the other two. Broken and wrapped, buried, hidden away. And comes back at the end of the meal. And it's given a new name. It's called Afikomen, which means... I will come again. <sighs> amazing. Just amazing. And he took the bread with his friends and he said, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You bring forth bread out of the land. Knowing that he was the bread that would be broken and divided. Lord, we give you thanks that you were willing to be striped and bruised and pierced, that your life would be poured out 
And you said every time that you do this, remember me. So we do, and we give you thanks. Greater love has no man than this, but he would lay down his life for his friends. And then Jesus turned to his disciples, his followers. He said, I, I call you friend. But friend isn't family. <laughs> you've, you've heard it said you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. So how amazing is it that in Hebrews chapter 11, Jesus says, I call you family. Pretty amazing. And then he says, I'm not ashamed to call you my brothers and sisters. Mm. The creator of the universe calls me family calls us family, which means that we're heirs to everything he has. Family gets the stuff. And how do we get the stuff? We got it when he gave up his life. See, in order to have an inheritance, someone has to die. And everything that we have now because he chose to give himself so that we could be joint heirs together with him. The same spirit that raised him from the dead. Whew. Pretty special. Love is presence. Jesus said to Jerusalem, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, which is the way that you start every Jewish wedding. And it's not the groom speaking to the bride, it's the bride speaking to the groom. He said, you'll not see me again until you welcome me as your bridegroom. Matthew 23, verse 37, 8 and 9. So we say, Baruch Adonai, B'Shem Adonai, Blessed is he who comes who comes in the name of the Lord. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your mind. And then we will rejoice as we're clothed with your righteousness and celebrate aloud. Baruch 
Hashem Adonai Blessed is He who comes Baruch Abba Hashem Adonai Who comes in the name of the Lord comes in the name of the Lord. Mm, come, oh come, Lord. Mm -hmm. So tonight is all about Yeshua his presence that blesses our lives, fills our homes, our hearts. Isn't that the greatest blessing anyway? His presence. When you have his presence, you got everything that comes with him. And we keep saying that's what this Shabbat thing is all about. Open up your home. family time. One more for January, and we're going to be well into 2021. So thank you for joining us again tonight. Pray that our lives and our home is a blessing to you and to yours. We've always said Shabbat in your home. From our home to yours, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Shalom.